Hello and welcome to another book time with Boo. Hope you've had a lovely week. We've got another brand new story for you today in the Big Green Book, so let's have a look and see what we've got. This is the story of Henry Widget. Henry Widget was an odd sort of fellow. He always wore a purple beret, no matter what the weather. He loved nothing more than finding out about what happened each Wednesday in history. He had gotten all the way back to 1925 so far. And his best friend was a sock puppet named Marigold. Henry Widget had some odd ways about him, but he was always a smiley, happy sort of person. One day, Henry and Marigold were out and about getting in the daily shop. Henry wasn't keen on big shops, so they always went to buy each thing they needed from a separate little shop along the road, slowly filling their bags, one of which Marigold had to carry in her mouth, which she found very demeaning. They stopped at the baker's to get two loaves of bread, one brown and one white. Good morning, Mr Crumb. Good morning, Henry. Morning, Marigold. I've got your loaves here for you too today, eh? Henry placed the exact money on the counter and scooped up the freshly baked loaves. Perfect. Thank you, Mr Crumb. Uh, thank you, Henry. And remember what we said before? My name is actually Crim, not Crumb. We... But Henry was already out of the door and Marigold pulled it shut behind them, closing it on the baker, who was shaking his head, smiling. You know his name, Henry, said Marigold. Yes, but Crumb is so much better for a baker, don't you think? replied Henry breezily, already thinking about the next shop. Next, Henry and Marigold went to the butcher's to pick up a packet of sausages. Morning, Miss Avery. Morning, Henry. Henry waited patiently. Miss Avery said nothing. <clears throat> good morning, Miss Avery. Yes, good morning, Henry. Henry waited again. Can I help you with something today? Henry slowly lifted up Marigold. Good morning, Miss Avery. He slowly pushed Marigold towards Miss Avery's face. Miss Avery sighed. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, Marigold. Henry smiled, satisfied. I'll take the large packet of sausages, please. Good morning, Miss Avery, said Marigold. The next shop was in fact not a shop at all. Henry and Marigold picked their way through the garden gate and across the overgrown lawn to the trapdoor in the ground. Marigold pulled it open and Henry shouted down, Good morning, Nola. An echoey reply came up from the darkness. Morning, both. Still here then? Yep, the world's not ended yet, Nola. A head slowly emerged from the deep hole, blinking in the sunshine through a pair of thick goggles. The lady seemed almost disappointed when she saw the bright sunshine and heard the birds singing. Ah, well, just the one today, Henry. Uh, actually, I'll be needing an extra if you've got it. Why? Oh, I should have another somewhere. Uh, Nola burrowed around in the darkness to the sounds of clanging and banging. Aha! Here we are. Two tins of baked beans. So, expecting company today, are we? Oh yes, my great aunt is coming for lunch and she likes things just so. Marigold muttered. Well, that's one way of putting it. She's a right old fussy trout. Uh, thank you, Marigold. No need to be rude. We actually haven't seen each other for quite a long time. Nola, clearly getting twitchy in the open air, cleared her throat. Well, <clears throat> I'm sure it'll all go great. Now just the matter of payment? Oh, of course, replied Henry, and handed over three large screws and a jar of vinegar. Keep the change. Thanks, Henry. Bye, Marigold. Henry looked at his list as they wound their way down the little road. Right, so we've got the bread sausages and beans. I think that's everything for today, don't you, Marigold? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, yes, the bag. Just nod if that's everything. Marigold nodded slowly, the bag swinging gently from her mouth. Henry nodded back and they set off for home to get everything prepared for the big visit. 
Together, they laid out tablecloths, wiped all the glasses and cutlery, set out plates and cooked up a delicious smelling lunch. Then came the knock at the door. Three quick, smart raps. Knock, knock, knock. Precise, to the point. It must be. Great Aunt Gloria, cried Henry, throwing open the door. How lovely to see you. Great Aunt Gloria gave a brief, curt nod. But her eyes grew wide as Henry laid a big, sloppy kiss on her cheek, followed, to Great Aunt Gloria's dismay, by Marigold. What is that? Great Aunt Gloria spat out, staring at Marigold with a look of surprise and disgust. Oh, I'm sorry, of course, you haven't been introduced. Uh, Great Aunt Gloria, this is my friend Marigold. Great Aunt Gloria was speechless. She opened and closed her mouth a few times, but only a tiny gargle came out. Let us take your coat, said Henry, whisking her into the house. Great Aunt Gloria finally found her voice. I see you're still wearing that ridiculous hat. Well, yes, purple is my absolute favourite colour and I... Henry trailed off as he saw Great Aunt Gloria's stern glare. It's odd, she said. Well... I suppose I am indoors and this is um, more of an outdoor hat. Henry sadly pulled it off his head and let it slide to the floor. Marigold stared. This was the first time Henry had taken off his favourite hat in 156 Wednesdays. He even wore it in the shower. Henry gave himself a little shake and smiled broadly. Right, let's have some lunch. Sausages, toast and beans, just as you like it. Hmm, said Great Aunt Gloria, we shall see about that. They sat and chewed in silence. Great Aunt Gloria watched disapprovingly as Henry fed himself with one hand, with Marigold watching happily from the other hand. That's it, his Great Aunt finally shouted, banging her cutlery on the table, making the salt and pepper jump. What is this ridiculous thing on your hand? You're a grown man, Henry. Take it off immediately. You mean Marigold, but she's my friend. She helps me all the time and we chat. And before Henry could finish, Great Aunt Gloria strode to his end of the table, grabbed Marigold from his hand, bunched her into a tiny ball. Stop it, you're hurting her. It's a sock, Henry. A dirty, filthy sock and I will not let this continue any longer. And with that, Great Aunt Gloria flung Marigold out of the open window and into the stream rushing by outside. Marigold, no! Henry could see Marigold taken and swooshed along the stream until she was pulled under the water and out of sight. He sank to the floor. Now, smarten yourself up and sort yourself out, Henry Widget. You are too odd for this family. I will be back next week to see that you've finally grown out of all this nonsense. Good day. And with that, Great Aunt Gloria swept out of the front door, slamming it behind her. A few days later, there was a strange gathering of people crowded round a trapdoor in a garden. He just seems so sad, said the baker. He even called me my real name. It didn't sound right at all. You know, Mr Crumb really is a better name for a baker. I mean, the sock was a bit silly, said Miss Avery, but he doesn't look right with two hands, does he? And I hate to say it, but I do miss Marigold. She was always so polite. He's not himself at all, not with that boring old black bowler hat. And he seems so nervous, always looking over his shoulder as though that awful great aunt of his will pop up at any moment. Mr Crim shook his head sadly. I'm not looking forward to this visit on Wednesday. What on earth will she do to him next? Ah, well, I may have had a little thought about that, said Nola from inside her hole. You see, something was caught in my little net the other day. She nodded over to a net that was trailing from the trapdoor all the way over to the river at the bottom of her garden. And it gave me a bit of an idea. Wednesday came the dreaded day of Great Aunt Gloria's arrival. Henry had trudged off to the train station to meet her, as she had instructed was correct to do in her 10-page letter she had sent the day before. 
He straightened his black hat and held out his hand for her to grip as she alighted from the train. Let us commence a nice brisk walk through town to your abode, where I shall inspect everything as spick and span, said Great Aunt Gloria. Henry nodded glumly. As they got to the top of the little road, something strange was happening. Why aren't all these shopkeepers in their shops? asked Great Aunt Gloria, outraged. As they got closer, they realised that the shopkeepers all had their hands raised up in the air, and on their hands were sock puppets, all different colours and lengths and faces made of things from around the house. What is this? Henry's great aunt was fizzing with rage. Who are all these ridiculous people? Good morning, great aunt Gloria, said the sock puppet on Miss Avery's hand, bowing slightly. Great aunt Gloria's face grew purple and her head seemed about to pop. Henry's smile grew wider and wider as he walked up the little road until he stopped in his tracks. Lola, what are you doing out of your hole? You... But his words were lost when Nola drew out something from behind her back. She might have been a little muddy and bedraggled, but there was no mistaking her. Marigold! Henry and Marigold hugged and span around with glee. Marigold dug inside Henry's jacket pocket and pulled out his purple beret. She knocked off his boring black bowler hat and placed the beret proudly back on his head where it belonged. Henry span around to face Great Aunt Gloria. Gloria, he said. She looked appalled to only be called by her first name. I think perhaps it's time you went home after all. Thank you so much for visiting, but your services are no longer required. You're just not odd enough for this family. Good day. He smiled and turned his back on the old lady. Come on, Marigold, he said let's go home. And together they strode up the little road. They agreed that this really was one of the best Wednesdays. Well, at least since 1925. Thank you so much for coming back and listening to another one of our stories. We do write these especially for you every week. So if you have got any ideas you'd like us to put in, please just leave us a comment either under our YouTube, on our Facebook, via Instagram, on Twitter, any social media, and we will try and slot it into our stories. In the meantime, you can catch up on all our craft time videos with Flossie on a Wednesday. They are all on our YouTube playlist, so they should be nice and easy for you to find. And you can also see all the previous Book Time with Boo videos there too. Look on all our social media for lots of other treats and activities during the week. And in the meantime, I will see you next Friday. Bye!